The De La Hiva guard or De La Hiva hook is one of the most commonly talked about positions in Jiu Jitsu, but there's a lot of mistakes when people are playing it and a lot of confusion about how to actually use it. So the first thing to understand is what is the difference between the De La Hiva hook and the De La Hiva guard. So a De La Hiva hook is basically any time my leg goes around the outside and hooks in here on his thigh, his hip, or sometimes goes all the way through, right? Um, we're gonna use this for multiple reasons and we're gonna get into the controls in a little bit, but I wanna make a distinction between that and the De La Hiva guard. So the De La Hiva hook can be used with many different grips. I could have collar sleeve with the De La Hiva hook. I could have double sleeve with the De La Hiva hook. I could have sleeve and ankle, collar and ankle. And the De La Hiva hook can be there all the time. So when someone says I'm in the De La Hiva guard, that doesn't necessarily tell me what hand grips that they have, right? So usually when someone says De La Hiva guard, what they're actually referring to is this outside hand holding the ankle here. Right? So now when I hold this ankle or pant leg, I'll often put in a De La Hiva hook, but sometimes I won't even have that hook and I'll come up and I'll move around so it kind of goes in and out. So it's an important distinction to understand. However, regardless of what hand grips I have, there is some really common themes with a De La Hiva hook that is gonna be true in all the positions and we're gonna overview how to use that and how it all fits together. So before getting into the mechanics of how to control each type of De La Hiva hook, another main aspect of why this position is so important is when I'm attacking my opponent for like classic submissions like triangle choke, armbar, omoplata, I'm attacking the upper body and trying to get his arms away from his upper body. So naturally one of the main ways people will try to defend that is putting one of their legs forward and using their elbow to defend this space, right? It's just a natural thing. And even off balancing, if I start pulling a guy and he has both of his legs square, so go to like a square stance, he's very out of balance, right? So he needs one leg forward and one leg back to create kind of a counter pressure against my poles, right? And this is often going to lead to access to a De La Hiva hook. And now with this De La Hiva hook, I can use this to off balance him. I can use it to take him backwards. I can use it to create torque on the knee to set up submissions. And it's going to give you access to so many different ways to attack and manipulate your opponent's position. All right, so now we're going to talk about the three different types of De La Hiva hooks and how to set them up with different grips. So the first kind of De La Hiva, really there's two uh, broader kinds is a shallow hook, which is where my foot here, you can come up this way a little bit, uh, is where my foot is hooking in here on his thigh or his hip, and then a deep hook. We'll talk about the deep hook last. It functions very differently from the first one. The shallow hook I categorize into two types. There is a weak shallow and a strong shallow. So bend just a little. Okay. So a weak shallow De La Hiva hook will be on like the thigh here. This is okay and I can use it briefly at times, but generally you can't get strong off balances, if he makes his legs straight, it'll pop out and it's not a great hook. What we really want is the foot to come up to the hip. When you get the hip, even if you stretch your leg straight now, even if he stretches his leg straight, it'll stay. In fact, I can have my leg straight as a board because a lot of people complain about mobility for this, but if you have good positioning, and we're gonna talk about that in a second, uh, I have my leg straight as a board like this. So there's no bend, there's no flexibility involved. And just by good body positioning, my hook is in and I can create off balance and movement with this. So the most important thing to be able to set a good daily heave hook is distance. The way that we get distance will change depending on the guard we're playing, but that will always need to be in play. So if you look at it, if my hip is really close here, my leg has to go back before it can go forward. So I'm very jammed up. There's no way for my foot to reach his thigh, right? The further back I am, the more uh, the less bend there is and the easier it is for the foot to grab. If I back up even more, I go here. If I come all the way back, at some point I can get to that point where I'm even straight. This allows my foot, you can come up here a little bit, to get up on the hip, right? You see, the closer I am here, the more I'm gonna have that shallow hook. But if I set some space here, I can start getting that foot up on the hip and now I have the ability to create big off balances backwards, what can turn into a barambolo. If I have a collar sleeve, it can, if you keep his elbow and knee tight, when I have this big off balance, go around that way, right? When I have this uh, good hook, I can create a big off balance there and that can open up omoplatas. So we always have to be setting distance to get that hook. Step back forward a little bit here. Right? Uh, even for the deep lace De La Hiva, it's the same idea. If I'm really close, even if I lift, it's hard to reach. Go around there. Uh, it's hard to reach, right? But the further back I am, the easier it is to reach. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You would think being really close makes you tighter, but in fact, it jams your own leg up. So you need to back up to be able to set these hooks and start working these positions. 
All right, so let's talk about setting distance to get this hook working from different guard positions. So the first one we're gonna start with is a classic De La Hiva guard holding the ankle or pant with my left hand. So here, if he's a little bit back, I can always just push off the hip and even push this a little bit if I need, or sometimes instead of pushing, I pull to the side a little, and I kind of just do a little like scoot back there. Now I have this distance. Now I'm gonna put this down so they can see. I can shoot this foot up. Even if his leg's a little more straight, I can still get this up to the hip, right? And now with this, I can control distance better. So get closer to me. See, I can push him back with the hook. I can off balance to the left. I can pull him in. I start getting all those off balances. Sometimes when I'm here, the guy's a little bit closer and it's hard to push on the hip. When that happens, I'll keep the collar and now I use this knee shield here across his torso to kind of push on his ribs and also uh, the closer he is, usually this is a little bent and even if it's not, it's fine. I can kind of lift, I can create a little lift on my hip with this, right? So when I press and pull out, I can create that nice slide back there and see I stiff arm the neck. Now my left foot can start to come into the hip and this is the basis for all the attacks. The main two attacks I'll go for in the beginning. First is I'll try to take my opponent to the left. You can stay where you are. I'll try to take him back this way by pushing the collar back, hold, blocking his ankle with my left hand on this side and kicking this hook backwards. So come back in, right? So I'll try to off balance him this way and this will start turning into knockovers and the barambolos and things like that. The other one I'll often try immediately is if I can't go that way, I lightly put my foot on the hip and then I pull my knees to my chest and my hook drags him in and I can create really nice overhead off balance situations here, which can turn into barambolos or different sweeps and things from there. So another good way to set distance to get the daily heave hook uh, from the ankle grip or the pant grip is I'll be holding the pant grip here and if I feel a little bit close, instead of even using the hook, I'll use my knee pressure in his knee and it allows me to alternate my hip out to get this extra space, right? So I'll be here like this, I have this sleeve in this case and I kind of alternate out and now I can switch back up to start setting that hook. Once I set the hook, I usually like to go back to the ankle or grab the calf here and now, go back that way, here. Uh, once I get that, I like to switch up to the ankle here or the pant and now my uh, forearm can kind of block his foot because his toes want to turn out to keep his balance, right? So whenever I go here, I can even use my elbow sometimes, I'm blocking that. Now as I create an off balance, he can't regain that and I can start knocking him down. All right, so now we're gonna talk about setting the hook from a collar sleeve situation. So the first threat with collar sleeve is I always wanna to try to get my foot on his hip and get the collar and the sleeve and my free leg is in the bicep usually. So from here, I'm trying to threaten going for an omoplata or triangle jerk. If he doesn't respond, I can often shoot the triangle, can go in here and start attacking omoplatas. So the usual response people have is pull their elbow and knee tight. From here, that elbow knee connection gives a slight bend making that hook easier to access. And anytime I need, I can use the left foot on the hip or the right foot, come around here pretty quick, uh, on the bicep like this. And again, I kind of just shimmy back a little bit like this. The further back I am, the easier it is to disconnect the elbow because I don't have to pull as far to create the same disconnection. The collar pull is stronger because the further back I am, the more leverage I have pulling the posture. So here he'll pull back his elbow even tighter and now I'll go around the other side. Now I can use this to swing out and I like to push him up a little bit to make room to start getting that hook. And now I'm starting to already create off balance. There, I could sweep by tucking the arm, or he often comes out with the arm like that, making the omoplata threat easier to go into. So you can use this hook, like I said, with many different guards. Two other common ones with like an ankle control will either be like a leg hug or an underhook. But again, my first priority is to always have distance. If I'm really close here and I have a leg hug, it's very hard to use this hook. So I'm gonna be playing other positions with the pant and ankle first until I get that hook nice and tight. Once I get the hook nice and tight, now I can come into a leg hug and the hook is already set tight. So now as he tries to center back up with me, as he tries to center back up, I still have this strong positioning to work. It's the same thing. If I pull him forward, I get this super strong hook. Now stay down the knee. Yep. I come down here like this. Now I can underhook and I have this good torque, come around this side, on the heel here, 
right? And now again, that hook is locked in. But if I was like early on in this position here and I try to go here, I just don't have the same kind of torque on this thing and it's slipping out. So double sleeve, you can also use De La Hiva a lot. So uh, often I have both sleeves here. Maybe the guy just stood up in closed guard. So if I'm too close, again, that hooks hard. So I like to use the alternation of my left knee and my right shin here to create slide back. So you see, I use that knee and that slid me back. And now as I alternate back to the other side, you can go around that side, I'm gonna use my right heel or calf here to kind of downward pressure as well. And I can get even more space. So depending on what they do, I'll do different things. If they leave this elbow knee gap open, then I might go to the hip push. This could turn into spider guard, could shoot triangles because that gap's open. But often as you get space, they try to close that gap with the elbow and knee, right? And now I can alternate and start getting that strong De La Hiva hook. As I get this hook, I can start off balancing him backwards with this. I can start pulling him in to go up overhead and you start creating off balances, right? But again, you have to understand for any of these hooks to work well, you need to be setting the space. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the deep lace a little bit. Again, there's a few different ways you can get to it, but the broad idea is I need space. So usually when we do this, we have to get some kind of lift off of our opponent's hip with our right foot. So if I don't have a grip with my hand here, that can be a bit hard because as I start to lift, he might push this off with his free hand and then you lose that space, right? Or you lose the ability to lift. So if I have the sleeve, I'm gonna slide back first. I have to have initial distance. And as I have the distance, I can now place this foot on his far hip here and it's very easy to lift. And I wanna lock my foot up high on the hip. I don't wanna be low. I wanna catch up high on the hip. From here, I often like to butterfly hook, drop down, and now I can come into De La Hiva X and start building attacks from here. Sometimes, come back around this side. Sometimes I'll do it from across sleeve. So maybe I had a sleeve, he postures up a little bit maybe. I have this space and really quick, I'll use the foot on the hip. Sometimes if this leg is a little bent, I can even use it off of the thigh, but if it's really straight, then I need to push on the hip, right? Bend it a little, fine. Yeah, like here. See, there I can get that nice lace by lifting off the shoulder. But again, you can do all that lift stuff, but if you're really close, it's just really hard to get the space for it. So the first thing you have to do, use that knee, get separation, and now you can get that nice deep lace. One last one I like to do sometimes is if my opponent, so I go to like one knee up, put the left knee on the floor, is if I'm on this side, playing on my right side, side tilt, I can be playing here with collar sleeve, go ahead and stand up. I can be like this, and if I feel like that right leg's a bit forward, and the, put your left leg back a little, right? Like this kind of a position here, if I switch to the other side really quick, I already have so much space, you can switch in really fast to that. So you can do that from double sleeve, from collar sleeve, sometimes, uh, posture up a little bit, even from like a reverse De La Hiva, I could be here, I bring this out, I have so much space, the switch is really easy to go through, right? One more time. See, I'm here like this, I'm threatening reverse De La Hiva. he's back, he hides that hand, right? Like this, this comes out, boom, lace there, and now I can start building from here. So obviously there's a lot more to De La Hiva guard than just that, but that's meant to function as like a foundational overview of the position. Uh, I cover a lot of De La Hiva guard in my collar sleeve course, and I have a De La Hiva course coming out soon. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out my website. The link is in the description, www.johnthomasbgj.com. And as always, if you like the content, like, share, subscribe. Thanks a lot.